linear programming problems. Okay. Yesterday we talked about linear programming basics. Do you remember that? First thing I need you to do is get that worksheet back out because remember we did not fill in the words on the top. I'd like to make sure you know the vocabulary. I'm not teaching you anything new today about this. I'm showing you the correct vocabulary words because those vocabulary words show up on our linear programming problems today and I need you to understand what they mean. Okay? So what do you have? Well, you have a feasible region formed by graphing a very good system of inequalities. Okay. <clears throat> Once you have your feasible region, we don't usually call it a feasible region. What do we usually call it? Like if we're looking at this example down here, a shaded area, right? We usually call it the shaded area. Understand that's the same thing as a feasible region. Fair enough? Okay. Under these, under these restrictions, you must, what do we do once we get the shaded area? Maximize or minimize some other function. Guys, it's usually cost or time. It's not required that it's cost or time. It just usually is. Okay? Um, then, what do we do with it? How do, uh, what do you, how, I don't even know what I'm saying. How do you do it? What do we use? Uh-huh. We use the vertices of the region because the vertices will give us the minimum or maximum. Okay? Understand that every point in this region is a solution to this system, right? So if we're talking about this particular system down here, give me one possible solution to this system. Negative 1, 1. Is that a possible solution to this system? How do you know? Yes because it's in the shaded, excuse me, in the shaded area. Okay, give me another possible solution. One negative one? Mm. Oh, one negative one, sorry about that. Is that a possible solution? What about three negative two? It's a vertex, right? Guys, what do you notice about all these inequalities right here? And all these inequalities right here? And all these inequalities over here? And all these inequalities right here? They're all solid lines. They're all something or equal to. Guys, if it's not something or equal to, we can't count the vertices as being part of the solution. Okay? So that'll give us a hint for today when we go to write our inequalities because it has to be something or equal to for us to count the vertices as part of the solution. Fair enough? Okay. Any questions about the, these vocabulary words? All right. Go back to our, our uh, problem for the day. Okay. A military unit is about to embark on an extended mission. So what are we doing today? No, no, no. We're not in the military. I'm saying what are we doing today? We are solving a meaningful system of inequalities. What does that mean, meaningful? Like we completely care about it? Or it means something in, a, in real, like a real situation? Okay, so does a military unit ever have to embark on an extended mission? Yes. Okay, so this is a meaningful problem. It's not just some random made up problem. Like with aliens and purple and bacon. Although that would be a good problem. Okay. Bacon makes anything better, even math. Okay? Purple bacon would be really gross. But like it... Grape-flavored bacon. You've had it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> the idea of it is very gross. Okay, back to military. 
Okay. Military unit's about to embark on an extended mission. The unit carries food in two types of servings, power bars, which resemble little snack cakes, and mini meals, which resemble small microwave dinners. These servings have different nutritional value as shown in this chart. The unit commanders are trying to plan how many of each type to carry on the mission, according to the restrictions below, right here. Okay. So for this situation, we need to first define our variables. Then we need to write a system of inequalities to describe the constraints. To describe the what? Uh, what does that mean? Restrictions. Okay, it's another word for restrictions, but it uses both of them throughout here, so I want to make sure you understand what I meant. Fair enough? Okay, then graph the feasible region for the numbers of each type of servings a soldier can consume in a day. All right? So, first of all, we have to define our variables. Now, some of you are confused in this and think that saying X and Y, there's my variables. Is that defining variables or writing variables? That's just writing. Okay, defining variables is telling me which ones are going to use and what do they mean. What is X going to mean in this problem? And why do you think it's the number of power bars? The unit commanders are trying to plan how many of each type of meal to carry with them. Okay. Because some, earlier some people were saying, well, carbohydrates needs to be X and calories needs to be Y. While I agree that those are both in this problem, we have to look at the question that's being asked or what, what we're being asked to do. Not, it's not always a question. Sometimes it's a statement. Okay. What we're trying to figure out. So X, we can say, can be power bars. And Y would then, then be mini meals. Okay. Garrett, would you do me a favor, please? Grab my jar of colored pencils from up there by be Beaker. So now we have defined our variables. Then write a system of inequalities. Thank you very much. So what kind of system of inequalities do you think we ought to write? What do we know? Say it again. We've got to get them in y equals in order to graph them, but that may not be the easiest way to write them based on the information, the way the information is given to us. Okay. What do you want to do? What do you know? They can't have more than twelve servings. That's one of our restrictions. So how? What? What's the equation going to look, or the inequality going to look like for that? X plus Y is less than or equal to 12. Why is it less than or equal? You can have 12, but you can't have any more. Good. Okay. So, what now? Do you want to go ahead and solve that for Y right now, or do you want to wait and solve it for Y later? Okay. We'll do it now. So, if I'm solving this for Y, I'm going to do this in blue because I'm going to graph it in blue later for the visual people, that helps, okay? So if I subtract X from both sides, I get Y is less than or equal to negative X plus 12. You wanna graph it now too, or you wanna wait and graph them all later? Doesn't matter, okay, so let's go ahead and write the next equation. What else do we know? Three hundred grams of carbohydrates. Do we know anything else about carbohydrates? How many are in each? Seventy-five per power bar. Fifteen per mini meal. And they have to consume at least three hundred grams of carbs. 
greater than or equal to 300. Yes? We good so far? So if we're solving this for y, let's subtract 75x from both sides. We get 15y is greater than or equal to negative 75x plus 300. And then divide everything by 15. Each term by 15, right? So y is greater than or equal to, how about negative 5x plus 20. We good? Okay, do we know anything else? Calories. Okay, what do we know about calories? There's 155 in a power bar, 310 in a mini meal. At least 2015. So what's the sign that goes there? Why is it greater than or equal to? It says least. Oh, at least. Good. I'm glad you can argue that. Very good. Okay. So when I solve this one for y, so subtract one one fifty five x from each side. Three ten y is greater than or equal to negative one fifty five x plus twenty fifteen. Divide everything by 310. y is greater than or equal to negative one half x plus 6.5. Okay, so far? Okay, well I still have the green in my hand, so can I go ahead and graph that one first? Is that all right? How do I graph that line? What's wrong? Tell me. Can you just not see it? Sorry, there's always a blur right over here and I don't know why. Okay, so I go up 6.5 on the axis, the y-axis, right? And then what? Down 1 takes me here and right 2. What did you want to do, Nolan? Oh yeah, you gotta go, if you're gonna go, that's really down a half, then you have to go over one. Down a half over one, right? But down one over two is what it actually reads. Yes? Did I not make it dark enough? Sorry, it is negative one half. So, is this a dotted line or a solid line? And is that even a question I have to ask you? No, because we already discussed that, right? Okay. And which direction am I shading here? Y above. It's greater than. Blue pencil or red pencil next? Blue. Okay. How do I graph this one? Up 12. Down one. Right one. Very good. And I know it's a solid line because it is less than or equal and because we've already had that discussion, yes? It's less than or equal, so I'm shading below. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Red pencil. Oh, no. Plus 20. Uh... I have to think about it, don't I? Dang it. If I start up here at 20, wherever 20 is, and I come down 5 and over 1, where am I? 
1, 15, right? If I come down 5, that puts me here, doesn't it? And over 1 puts me here. Down 5, over 1, down 5, over 1. Was that really that hard? No, but people panic automatically because there's not a 20. Don't panic automatically. And I am shading above. Yes, very good. Okay, so where's my solution? Right there, right? So somebody tell me one possibility of a solution to this system. And not just numbers, but tell me words. What numbers did you say? <coughs> you said six. Oh, six is right here. Six, six. What does that mean? Six power bars and six mini meals. Okay. Tell me another solution. Four power bars and six mini meals. Is that a solution? Yes. How many solutions do I have again? I have a lot. Now, if we want to be like specific and a little more clear, I have less than I normally would because can I have half a power bar? No, so it's only really the these points right here, the, the integers that I can count as solutions, right? I'm not going to worry about that, okay? I'm not going to worry about that because I don't have to list all of them, do I? What do I have to list? Just the vertices. So what are my vertices? Eleven one is this one, right? Three five is this one. And what did you say? Two ten would be that one. Okay. So, like as of yesterday, was I done yet? When we did linear programming basics, was I done yet? What did I have to do? Minimum and maximum, right? I had to use that C equation. C equals something. And remember we, we talked about today when we filled in the, the top? This C is usually a cost or a time function, isn't it? Do you know anything in this problem that talks about cost or time? The part that we haven't read yet. Look, the contracted food service charges the military a dollar twenty-five for each power bar and three seventy-five for each mini meal. Determine the maximum and minimum costs for feeding two hundred fifty troops on a thirty-day mission. So, what is my C equation? C equals what? My cost. 125x, mm -hmm. 375y, very good. So what I need to do then is put each one of these three points into that cost equation, don't I? Okay, 125 times, whoops, 125 times 11 plus 375 times 1. Well, 125 times 11, you guys have your calculators out? Oh my gosh. Every day, yes please. 125 times 11 is 1375 plus 375. What is 1375 plus 375? 1750, very good, thank you. Okay, 
Then I had to put the next vertex in, right? 125 times 3 plus 375 times 5. 125 times 3, fairly obvious, yes? Hopefully. And then 375 times 5 is 1875. So 375 plus 1875, 2250, thank you. And then the last one, 210. 125 times 2 plus 375 times 10. Well, 125 is 250, and 375 times 10 is 3750, which gives me 40. So please tell me which one of these is the maximum. The last one, wait, what is this, 40 what? Oh, $40, okay. So that's the max. So that's the min, very good, okay. But it doesn't just ask me to find the maximum and minimum. It says find the maximum and minimum, minimum if we're feeding 250 troops for 30 days. So what do I have to do with this 1750? Multiply by 250 and then by 30. What is 1750 times 250 times 30? 131,250 what? Dollars. Times 250 times 30. 40 times 250 times 30. $300,000. So my favorite question for you to for me to get to ask you, uh, what does that mean? They're going to be spending three hundred thousand dollars if if what if if they want two power bars and ten mini meals. Very good. They're going to spend one hundred thirty one thousand two hundred fifty dollars if. They want 11 power bars and one mini meal. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions about how to do this? Because here's the deal, guys. This right here, that's the answer, isn't it? The maximum and minimum. But we can't get the answer without doing all this, can we? You know how sometimes I show you the, the long way on paper and then I show you the shortcut in the calculator? There's not one. I mean, you have to know all the, you have to find all the equations. You, you could put them in the calculator and find the, the vertices like this it would be points of intersection. But, I mean, it would take us just as long to do it on paper as it does in the calculator. Okay? So which problems are you doing? You're doing problem number two and three or four, okay? Problem two and then problem three or four. Any questions about that? Okay, come and ask me for help um, in the morning if you need help um, or after school today, but please do keep in mind that we do have a test tomorrow. Your study notes are on the board. They are on my blog. Um, one more question before I let you go. Do you think we were successful in our objective today. What were we supposed to do today? Solve a meaningful system of inequalities. Did we solve a system of meaningful inequalities? Yes. Okay. Now I need you to do two more. You have the rest of the period.